Hi everyone, today is the 13th of January, it's a Tuesday and Liam is three weeks and four days I think today. The other cool things we've done this month is we've taken his footprints. So I was going to scan these and use them for scrapbooking, put them in my journal and things like that. Um, so those are his footprints. And we did another set here. Um, so yeah, and this is a smudged handprint. Yeah, when babies are awake, handprints don't really work. And it's hard to get them to do it when they're asleep because by the time you put the ink on, they're awake. So yeah, handprints don't really work when they're this young, as we found out. Um, but you know, we have the hand smudge, so. And they give you these at the hospital anyway, but we wanted to do our own cute ones. I was going to do it on better paper, but yeah, as I said, he just wasn't a fan of doing this. And this one's sort of like a white one. This is just us putting ink on one paper and then trying again, and this was the result. So you probably needed more ink for that one, but what can you do? Um, yeah, we used computer ink. I would suggest not to do that because it's still, some of it's still under his fingernails. And that was a week ago that we did that. So probably not the best idea. And what we did to get it off was we used moisturiser. And that seemed to work mostly. But yeah, try not to use permanent inks because that's not a good idea. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and also, obviously, if you do that, make sure they don't put it in their mouth because it, it could be dangerous. Yeah, okay. So this is, um, we got these today. You probably saw me randomly holding that up without talking about it. <laughs> this is his new Medicare card. So we've got two of these. The funny, actually, the funny story that went with this is um, when I went to get my ultrasound done for my blood clot in my leg, I hadn't brought my Medicare card with me. My husband had it, but he was picking his mum up from the airport. So um, I had to try and ring him up and say, oh, well, what's the Medicare number? But obviously, since he was in the airport, he didn't have his phone on. So then I had to ring up Medicare <laughs> and try and get the number. This was the day before Christmas Eve, so they were really busy. Um, yeah, but I was really panicky because they said if I couldn't get the Medicare number, I'd have to pay $500 because I couldn't bulk bill without the number. So I was really stressing about that. But anyway, um, when I rang them up, they did their quiz, you know, and they're like, oh, how many people are on the card? And I said, oh, two, you know, me and my husband. And they're like, no, try again. And I was really confused, you know. I was like, why, why? There's two people on the card. And then it finally dawned on me that maybe my husband had put the baby on the card. So I was like, oh, well, I am pregnant. And then I was like, oh, whoops, I mean, I had the baby on Thursday. Because, <laughs> you know, I hadn't quite registered that I was a mum yet at that point. Not really. Um, so, yeah, then they're like, bingo, you got it, ding, ding, ding. And they're like, what's the baby's name? So, yeah, finally <laughs> I was able to get the Medicare number card. So, yeah, make sure you always have that if you're going to have an ultrasound because otherwise it costs like $500, which I didn't know. So, yeah, interesting. Um, this is a parcel we got today is along with the Medicare, but, you know, separately. Um, so this is actually his birth certificate. We haven't opened it yet. We've taken some pretty cute shots of him with it, which I'll show you here. Um, so, I'm a bit worried about ripping the sticker though because it's really nice and I don't want to. But my husband insists on me opening it on camera, so pressure's on. Alright, so this is what it looks like. And we did order two, so I'm hoping two's in here but I'm not sure. We ordered the normal one, which I think it comes free when you have a baby. And we ordered a specialty one as well, which was about $60, just for his wall or whatever. Um, really don't want to rip this, but I might. Yeah, that's good. Alright, there we go. So, that's pretty cool. That's like mine. Because I've got mine recently, it's got the same pattern, I think. I might be wrong. I think you can see that. So it says 
Townsend Liam Andrew, sex male, 19th of the 12th, 2014. Place of birth, La McEwen Health Service, Elizabeth Vale. I kind of hoped it said South Australia on there, but it doesn't. Which I thought it would. Because, you know, if he goes country hopping, how's he going to know where Elizabeth Vale is? It's a bit stupid. Anyway, I'm sure if you Google that later or whatever they have in the future, they'll you'll be able to tell that that was here, hopefully. Um, and then it's just got me, it says my occupation's a music tutor, it's got our address, my birthday, where I was born, which is Woodville, South Australia, and my husband, who was born in Bacchus Marsh, Victoria, it says he's a photographer, and our address again. Um, and then it's got our marriage of parents, which is me and my husband, obviously, which is the 21st of January 2012, at Paravista, South Australia, and then it's got informants which I think them is a new because I don't think I've got that on mine. Um, it's got me and my husband and it says mother and father. And then it's got the registration date which apparently was the 30th of December last year. The one that's going on his wall or whatever we decided to do. Which I think is really cute. Apparently we went for the bunny one. I know there were two we were looking at. This is obviously the one we went with. I can't remember the other one. I was so old at the time. So there you go, it's quite a lot nicer, I think. So it says, Liam Andrew Townsend, and then it's just got the same information again, pretty much. It's got mother, father, place of birth. This one does say South Australia, so I am glad in the end that we got both. It says Elizabeth Vale, South Australia. So that's good. Yeah. So that's his birth certificate, which is quite cool. We may or may not get one of those um, little containers that you put them in, or we may just put them in the filing cabinet, I don't know. Or at least the main one. So these are most of the outfits that we find absolutely adorable or very, very practical um, for his one month, so far anyway. So I'll just show you some of these. Now, obviously it's not complete because some are in the wash and he's wearing one, you know, so which hopefully we'll show you at the end. Um, okay, so this is his little sleeping sack. It's long enough, it's a bit longer than him. It's summery, so you know, he can stick his hands out there, which he loves to do. He loves getting his hands out, so it's good for him for that. And it's cute, it says at the zoo. Um, my mother-in-law thinks that he looks like Spongebob when he wears this. So yeah, he can sleep in that, I can feed in that quite easily, except his hands get in the way. Um, yeah, it's just summery, nice lightweight. So he could even just wear that with a singlet and a nappy, or just a nappy, and it's usually fine. Um, this one's probably my favourite and most practical item that we have at, like, of all time. So. This is a Love to Dream Swaddle. Yeah, Love to Dream Swaddle. These retail for about somewhere between $50 and $70 each, I think. And we got this for about $15, along with some other ones. We got lots of Ergo Baby ones, but I haven't even tried those yet. They look a bit big. But I absolutely love, love, love this swaddle. Because you can feed him and he can't get out, which is great. <laughs> um, and he just falls right to sleep when you put him in that, usually. Um, yeah, so we've used this a lot, a lot. Um, our mother carer suggested to put him in these at the night time and then um, take him out and put him in normal clothes in the daytime. To be honest, we haven't really been doing that so far just because, you know, he kept weeing through everything all the time. And yeah, sometimes he wees through this and it's a shame when you have to wash it because we've only got the one. Um, it's even got this pocket down here that you can... Um, check his bum and if he's pooed or not. I haven't actually used it for that purpose, but that's what that's for. And then, I don't know if this one does it, but sometimes you can get these and you can actually open the arms up, but I don't think this one does that. So yeah, I really, really like that swaddle. Because he can't get out. <laughs> it's good. Um, all right, I haven't actually tried this one, I don't think yet, but it's very much the same sort of thing except slightly more lightweight, I think. Yeah, so it's called Baby Studio. 
and I got this along with the other one. And again, he probably won't be able to get out of this. I haven't actually tried it yet though. So it's very long and skinny, just like him. Yeah. This one doesn't have quite as much room for the arms, so he might not like that one as much. And I don't like the pattern as much. It's a bit vain. All right. Vain's not word. Superficial. Okay. These are his first leggings that he wore, and these were super super cute. But as soon as we put them in this, um, one of the midwives came and wanted to check him, so of course they undressed him. So he wasn't in those very long at all. We've put this on him a few times. We have another one that's similar. I can't remember what's on it, but oh, it says one of these says little puppy, and it's similar to this. This one's a bear playing the drums. Um, so these are super cute. They're easy to change him in because you just undo the press studs, and then you just change him. I've been teaching him counting by one and do the press studs up, saying one, two, three. So the way I put him in this is I just put this over his head, so head in first, like through that way and then pull the arms in and then pull it under him and then do it up so it's quite easy to do up and if he keeps weighing through or whatever you don't even have to close that you can just leave it like a shirt so those are very good um i absolutely loved him in this <laughs> i think he's worn this once or twice it's just got like go stop go stop like traffic lights and little feet which you can open up to change him and little arms it's just one press stone, so it's quite easy to get him in and out of that, and it's just super, super cute. Um, if he was crawling now, that would be really cute, because he'd actually be moving, like go stop. But yeah, it's only a 4-0, I think. Um, then we've got a few of these little hats. We've got this in white, and some with stars and dots on them, and they're just really practical. He doesn't really wear hats much now, because it's summer, but if we were to go out in the stroller or whatever, he'd probably wear them. Or if we have the cooler on. And we might put one on. Um, singlets, I can't stress how practical singlets are. Um, since it's summer now, he just practically wears these all the time. I like the blue, but the white is really good because you can bleach it. And somebody told me that the long ones are really good, but I actually disagree. I don't like the long ones because then you have to take them off and on with a nappy, and they're more likely to get wet. So personally, I don't actually like the long ones, and they can also bunch up. But yeah, when I bought them, I was told to get long ones. I don't really know why. Anyway, so I like those. I've got a zillion of those. But we didn't get enough 4 zero, so he's actually mostly 3 zero. But they seem to fit, so it's fine. This is probably my favourite outfit of all time on him. I got this second hand, but it was new, so they hadn't actually used it. I've got this in 3 zero as well. I'm worried about that. This is still 4 zero. Um, the mother carrier said he'll probably be in 4 0 for about two months. So, yeah, it's just stars and it's really cute. So, he's in that. And then this one, we did a little photo shoot of him in this the other day. You probably saw it in my last vlog about the birth video. It's in the front scene. So, it's really, really cute. And it's adjustable as well. So, it's got two press studs. So, if he grows a bit and the shoulders are too small, you can adjust that, which I like. Um, so, it's just a little set of overalls. It's the cutest thing ever. It says peekaboo, and um, yeah, he can have this little pockets, which obviously he's too young to put anything in right now. But you could probably even keep the dummy in there if you wanted. But yeah, we had a little shot of him putting his hands in there. It's so cute. I love that one. Um, so that's that's it for the clothes plus what he's wearing, which I'll just show you like this. So hopefully you can see. It's just um some stripy overalls. Apparently this is the most impractical thing we've put him in because my husband said he had to contortion the baby to fit him in and also he's wearing one of those Bonds rompers which only open at the back so yeah that's probably really impractical so he may not wear this again so this will probably be the only time he'll wear it which is a sad because it's cute but you never know depends how long he's in four zeros for and how much he weighs everything. Oh, it's okay. Good afternoon. Young sir. Alright, so basically, um, let's see, over the last three weeks since we've been home and this all started, um, he's been quite strong. We were surprised with his strength. He can lift his head, like, this far off my chest, you know, so I'll put him here to burp him order. 
he'll actually push with his hands and his feet and he'll he'll have his head like out here by himself so you have to always you know support the head and stuff but yeah like even with tummy time he can be on the floor he can start wriggling forward a little bit i wouldn't call it anywhere near crawling but you know he can move a bit and um yeah he can lift his head up i'll show you a few photos of him doing that if you'd like um yeah he loves to touch his ear so whenever you get him on the boob or put him on the bottle he'll bring his hands up like that and he'll touch his ears like that and he'll, he'll really suck i don't know why he does that my brother used to do this thing when he got excited he'd like go like that so i don't know if it's to do with that or not but yeah he just loves touching his ears and his eyes and he's always poking his eyes which i'm a bit worried about because he's got longer nails now I was thinking about cutting them, but I'm a bit scared because I don't really know how to cut such small nails without cutting the skin. I did buy small baby nail clippers, but I haven't used them yet. This is his waking up face. You can see him waking up now. He might start crying because he only got half a feed last time. His choice. <laughs> Alright, um, over the last two days, as I said, he's been posetting, which is a nice term for baby vomit. He's vomited about four times now. First on grandma, second one was on my bed, third one was on my pillow and the fourth one was on me. Yeah. He hasn't weed or pooed on me yet, although my husband said in the shower he peed on me but I didn't even notice. <laughs> so, I don't know, but he hasn't pooed for me when I'm changing him or anything yet. Although sometimes he'll poo like just when you put the nappy on he'll poo again. So yeah, sometimes you have to go through like three or four nappies within like half an hour. But sometimes I just get fed up and I leave him in it for a while. Um, he hasn't really gone more than six hours without a feed. Normally I'll try and wake him up after three to five hours. But yeah, we got a bit concerned when it was like nearly seven hours. But then he just woke up and had a massive, massive feed. So basically the general rule is you can leave him for about five hours if you have to. Um, sometimes he goes through five hours. It used to be at night and we're really happy with it, but now it's more during the day than he wakes up at night. Um, he has a really fussy period um, around somewhere between 5 p.m. and like 11 or 1 a.m. or something like that. He'll just, he'll be inconsolable for a few hours. But that usually ties him out and sometimes he will sleep for like five hours after that. So it's normally okay. Um, yeah. So sometimes after one side of the boob, you sort of have to wake him up again for the other side. So, you know, I've just been singing him a song. I'm not going to do it now because he's just a bit content. But you just sort of hold him up and hold his head and you go, wakey, wakey, baby. Wake up the baby. You know, and he might actually wake up from that now. I don't know. Um, but yeah, he seems to enjoy that. He really sort of is alert and he almost even smiles when you do that. He just immediately will stop crying if he's crying when you do that as well. So he seems to really love singing and attention and being talked to. So far he's pretty clingy. When he's in his inconsolable phase, he'll just want cuddles. You know, you'll put him down and he won't even want the dummy. He'll just cry and want you. So you have to pick him up and hold him. So I was thinking about getting a sling. Um, since I'm big, I was thinking about getting a stretchy wrap or something like that. Although we do have a, I don't know what it's called, but like a sturdy carrier thing, like structured one. Um, and apparently you can get infant inserts for those. But I haven't heavily researched them yet. I have someone that said she can sell me one of the sling ones for $20, but I don't know if I'm going to get it yet. It's a good boy. The other thing I haven't got yet is a feeding chair. But we haven't really got the funds to get that at the moment. So I've just been feeding him on the couch or on like a computer chair next to a desk or on my bed. But it's getting kind of uncomfortable. Over the last week, I've experimented with different positions. So I can feed him like that, which he tends to like. But if you do that, you have to sort of unblock his nose because sometimes he will suffocate a little bit. And sometimes he just falls off if you don't hold the boob up. So that position's a little bit annoying. The other one he likes is the football hold, which tends to work better on this side. So you just kind of have him like that, like a football. And then he can usually grab on himself and he doesn't suffocate because his nose is more free. Um, or the other one I've been trying just this week 
is lying down or back and seeing if he will actually latch like that. He's done it twice. The first time he kept falling off. But now that he's started vomiting, I'm not sure how much I'm going to do that one. Um, I also accidentally fell asleep once with him on my chest, which is very dangerous. So don't do that position if you're tired. I found out. But he was fine. You know. We wake up and he was exactly how I left him. But yeah, my husband came in, he was a bit shocked. Um, I think that's the only other position I've been really trying. Or like fully laying down with him just like on the chest and seeing if he can find it. And he eventually did, but he didn't have a very good latch. So when they're latching, you want them to be like on the areola pretty fully. So you want to just pull their chin down. So if you can see his face there, I don't know if I want to actually do it, but I'll just show you. You just like pull the chin down and then you pull the boob in. If you want to see if he's hungry, you can get a finger nailed down on the tongue and you just put it in his mouth. And if he sucks on it really hard, then you know that he's hungry. If he just does like three sucks, he's probably not. Um, also be careful when you're putting blankets on him and stuff, because if it's touching his mouth, he might think that it's food. And he's like chewed on the blanket a few times, he's chewed on people's arms and stuff like that. The other thing that I didn't know that somebody told me, my mother care told me, is that um, babies can smell the mother. So if the mother's around, they might think that they're hungry, even if they're not, and they might start crying and be really confused. So yeah, I don't usually get a lot of placid time with him because he'll usually cry. So this is actually rare right now, what he's doing. Um, yeah, but since he loves to be on his stomach, I can usually calm him down by doing this. Which is good. He's quite content now. Um, yeah, so if he's inconsolable, try giving him to somebody else and walking away for a while. And that might cool him down. Um, usually, if we've done everything we can, you know, like fed him, burped him, changed him, everything like that. Um, we can leave him just to cry in his own bassinet in his room. And um, he'll usually fall asleep within an hour or so. It's hard to do that, but he does have to learn that he can't just be cuddled all the time. Harsh as that sounds. Because, you know, like when I go back to work, I won't always be around to hug him and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, now, as for sleeping, uh, he's been sort of sleeping in various areas. So, at night, he'll usually sleep in his room. We can darken it off, and because there's no movement of us and no sound, he usually sleeps a bit better in his room. We have a monitor where you can turn it on and you can hear him in there. Although, where we are is the room next door to him, so you can usually hear him anyway. But the monitor just makes it a bit louder, so that if I am in a deep sleep, I'm more likely to hear him. Um, and then sometimes he's been sleeping in a bassinet in our room, so next to our bed. And that just makes it easier. If he's a bit irritable, you can just like get up and get in rather than walking out every time. Um, we've been changing him pretty much always in his bedroom on the change table. We've put a, what do you call it, like a travel mat on the actual change table so we can just wash that rather than getting the big thing off every time. I'm thinking about getting another one that Mandy gave us for bathing but I have to find where I put it now. Um, so yeah, what else? Um, I'm thinking about crazy sleeping but I think it's just a bit too dangerous. We probably won't do that. Um, I'm not sure what else. I might do another update if I think of stuff. I'm just a bit tired right now, so yeah. Um, as for me, my bleeding stopped a couple of days ago, and today is the first time that I've actually been daring enough not to wear a pad. So just before this, we started this video and everything, I um, I put no pad on for the first time. So I don't know how it's gonna go, but yeah, I haven't been bleeding for a few days, so I'm gonna see how it goes. Um, my doctor said that we could start having sex again or like going in pools and stuff with chlorine from about four weeks. I don't know how daring I am to try that or not yet. I'll probably wait a few more weeks, maybe up to six weeks. But you know, especially for the pool. But I really have been wanting to go in the pool, so it's been quite annoying. So we only got the pool recently and um, I was thinking, oh yeah, I'll use it, you know, before I'm in labour as a relaxing thing, you know, and I've only been able to use it four times, so... 
bit of a disappointment. At least I can use it in February, so that's good. Yeah, I mean. I'm going back to work in about two weeks. Um, my husband wanted me to start working in two days' time. I did advertise, but I haven't had any students apply. So um, next week, I've got one student. And then the following week, I've got a few. I don't even know how many yet. At least somewhere between two and 17 students. I don't know. Depends if my other school gets back to me about their hours and stuff. Because the boss hasn't told me yet what's happening. Good boy. So I'll either go back around the 29th-ish for that school or the following week. I'm not sure yet. So I might have about 15 students there. And then my other two schools. Um, one I will most likely not go back to. It's because I've only got a few students there and it's further away. So we'll just see what happens with that one. The other one I've got about 20 students there. But I'm starting that in term two. So about April I think maybe. Maybe earlier. I'm not sure when that goes back. Um, and then my home studio, I'm just trying to get more students. So I don't know how many I've got yet. I've got two for sure. And then I don't know how many from last year are coming back yet. Nobody's really got back to me. And I've been a bit slack with updating policies because I just haven't had time yet. And I was supposed to get done on the 15th of December, but he was only born like the 19th. So yeah, I was really slack with that. And now it's already the 13th of January and I still haven't done that yet and school goes back in two weeks. So I've really got to get onto that in the next like two or three days. Um, yeah, as I said, my blood clots have gone down more now. I'm stopping the Klexane. I'm still having the Herodoid cream just when it feels a bit more inflamed and I'm not really doing much more. I've been trying to go for walks but the weather's been pretty bad lately so whenever we were like, oh let's go for a walk, it started raining or it was like 43 degrees. <laughs> You know, like we've had bushfires here um, over the last few weeks and we've also had flash flooding. <laughs> so it hasn't really been good weather for taking him out yet. We haven't really gone for a walk and a stroll with him yet, except for, you know, doctor's appointments or like something like that, you know, so not really a lot. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what else. His hair seems to be going blonde, but darker blonde. I'm really hoping it lights up, lightens up because when I was a baby, well not baby but like two, I had jet white hair because my dad did. So I'm hoping he gets more of a light colour. And his eyes, although he's asleep now, his eyes are grey with like a blue tinge. So when he was born they were very very dark bluey grey and now they're like a lighter grey with a slight blue tinge depending on the light. But again, my husband and I both have more bluey eyes so I'm hoping he gets more of a blue Blue eyes, blonde hair, airy in for the look, because I think that's cute. But we'll see. His face has definitely, definitely rounded up more. I don't know if you can see, but he's got chubbier cheeks now, which he didn't have at birth. And even his toes, they look a bit more chubby. His legs and thighs are a bit more chubby, which you can't really see in this outfit, but they're a lot more chubby now. Um, he's also gripping more, although he's asleep now, but. Usually if I do that he'll grip my hands or he'll start like touching books um, or like as I said pulling my glasses off on my hair but yeah it's very placid <laughs> so you can just enjoy a few moments of looking at the baby you can until baby Liam Andrew Townsend yeah. I kind of wish he'd stay this small forever because he's really cute and he's hard Oh, the other thing, when he was born, I could do that, and he would fit, like, his whole body in the cock of my arm. Like, I could have hand-to-hand -hand like that, and he could fit. But now, as you can see, his legs, like, way overhang that. So, he's getting really, really tall now. Alright, well, I'm going to leave the video there, because it's already really long. Um, so, have a good week. Enjoy the rest of your holidays, if you're having them, or whatever you're doing. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.